okay so the recording is started now so we will uh, wait for a minute or two and then we will start our lecture Okay, so uh, let's start it. I have shared a screen with you people, and hopefully you would be able to see it. Okay, if you are having any question in between, you can open up your mic, and you can ask me question during the class. Okay, if you don't ask me, or if you remain silent, so I will assume that you people are getting every point. okay so uh, so far what we have done we uh, studied chapter 1 and chapter 2 completely chapter 2 was very big chapter and what it included it included basically forces resolution of forces uh, then uh, moments couples and after couples we went through resultants or net resultant and then the same topics in 3d so initially we did it in 2d and then all those topics in 3d now we will come towards chapter 3 and chapter 3 is about equilibrium uh, so what is equilibrium uh, equilibrium can can be like uh, having two conditions one condition is uh, is related to statics another one is related to uh, dynamics so in case of statics uh, if there is some for some there are number of forces or moments occur in the system and if the net effect of all of them are zero so we can say that the object is in equilibrium in case of dynamics uh, the object will be moving at a certain speed or certain velocity okay but that should be uniform okay so now let's study what we have over here uh, since we are uh, talking about equilibrium so we can say if there is no unbalanced force acting on the system if there is no unbalanced force acting on a body so we will say that the body is in equilibrium unbalanced force means if uh, the forces are not cancelling the effect of each other so this means the body will try to move or it will be having some motion or it will uh, be having some acceleration or change in motion or change in speed change in velocity okay so what that's why we say when there is no unbalanced force acting on a system or acting on a body then we say that the system or body is in equilibrium okay so as i have told you that uh, for static as well as for dynamic we can have different uh, conditions since uh, we deal with statics only in this semester so let's see what what will be having the condition equilibrium of body is a condition in which the resultant of all forces acting on the body is zero so resultant of all forces mean that the resulting forces 
or the resulting force as well as the resulting moment means the combination of all forces and the combination of all moments acting on the body it should be equal to zero so that is the sum summation of all forces and summation of all moments about any point it should be equal to zero Okay, I had a problem with my laptop. I may need to restart it. Okay, you people, uh, please wait for a while. I'm going to restart my laptop.
Okay, so I think now you can see the screen. So, uh, means uh, what were the condition for statics? Uh, in case of equilibrium, it was summation of all forces and summation of all moments must be equal to zero. Whereas in case of dynamics, uh, the resultant of all forces on body is not zero. Rather than it is equal to uh, means the product of mass and acceleration. F, e ha L F is equal to ma according to Newton's second law of motion. So the summation of all forces, that is F, it should be equal to the product of mass into acceleration. So on left side, we will be having forces and on right side, you will be having product of mass and acceleration of that body. Whereas in statics, on left side, we will be having submission of all forces uh, and on right side, we should have zero. Okay. So uh, equilibrium can be observed like in so many systems, but here uh, in our case, uh, we, we are doing all those studies for rigid bodies. So for rigid body equilibrium, what we say, a rigid body will remain in equilibrium uh, provided the given condition, mean, which we just discussed, that is the summation of all forces must be equal to zero and summation of all moments. So for example, if you are having a 3D system, for example, you have this system uh, that, that can be considered as a 3D or that is in space and it is having some forces and some moment. So the sum of all external forces acting on the body is equal to zero and sum of all moments of external forces about a point is equal to zero. So summation of forces in x direction will be zero. Similarly, summation of forces in y direction, summation of forces in z direction, all of them should be equal to zero. And similar is the case with moments about any point. I mean summation of all moment about x axis, about y axis and about z axis, they should be zero. Now, under what condition we need to study, we need to consider a system as a 3D and under which condition we can consider it as 2D. So look here, all physical bodies are 3D. We already know that every physical body, every physical object is actually 3D. But we can treat many of them as two dimension. Why we can treat it, how we can treat when the forces to which they are subjected act in a single plane or can be projected into a single plane. So it means the forces, if the forces are acting in 2D or in two axes or in a plane, so we can consider the system as a two dimensional case. But when this simplification is not possible, so in that case, the problem must be treated as 3D. Or in other words, you have to consider it then the actual scenario or the 3D scenario. Okay. So uh, for solving equilibrium problem, there are certain steps. And among them, the first step is basically what you need to do uh, for a system means the system under consideration for which you want to do all those analysis what you need to do first you will draw its free body diagram are you you uh, and how you can draw the free body diagram in free body diagram for example if this is the system or if these wires or these rope are the system we have to isolate it we have to remove all surrounding things from it we have to isolate this body on which we want to do our analysis okay so uh in free body diagram, what we will do, for example, if I want to study the tension in this wire, in this wire, and in this wire, so what I will do, I will take this side out, means yahan pe jo bhi supporting structure, hai, I will remove this supporting structure, this supporting structure, this uh, structure or the base, the, the, the car or the vehicle and the load which are applying some forces. And instead of all those supporting structures and loads, what I will do, I will show forces. I will replace all those things by forces so for example the person is pulling this uh, this rope so means the pull over here and the pull over here it should be same and similarly the pull over here and the pull over here it should be same in, over here in this wire will be having tension in this will be having tension and if i remove this load so the load is actually it is acting downward so instead of this i will show a downward force so what i did over here i remove all the supporting structure and instead of them i'll are replaced that supporting structure by the forces which uh, were affecting this body or which were applied due to the supporting structure on this body. So you are already aware about free body diagram uh, due to your other course that is mechanics of material or mechanics of solids. Okay, so how we can define a free body diagram, we can say it's a mathematical model of physical system in which the effect, uh, in which the effect of supporting structures are replaced by reaction forces. 
so the actual diagram like here in which we have all the things they are basically known as space diagrams so a sketch showing the physical condition of the problem the actual physical condition whereas in free body diagram what we do we basically make a sketch showing only the forces on the selected particle or on the selected body okay hopefully you are getting my points so uh free body diagram if you want to make a free body diagram so you need to uh, understand few concepts and uh, for example if you have to remove some supporting structure so by removing the supporting structure what sort of forces you will put if you remove the su uh, supporting structure or if you want to remove uh, if you want to replace the supporting structure with the forces so what you will, can do for example over here you see flexible cable belt chain or rope so over here what we have we are having basically uh, this rope and this rope is actually pulling this body towards the support so if i want to make analysis on this body so what i will do i will remove the supporting structure if i want to remove the supporting structure so the effect that it was causing on this belt or on this rope i will show it so here you can see i remove this one but the force or the effect of this body on this one are the supporting structure on this body i have shown it over here so force ye yahan pe apply kar raha tha i have shown that for similarly what one more thing uh, in case of ropes and cables and belts usually the uh, tension that we have or the forces that we uh, that we have in the system or that involved in the system those forces are much 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 greater than the actual weight of the uh, pulley or the uh, the actual weight of the belt or the actual weight of the rope so that's why we neglect the weight of rope so over here you can see that the deflection due to the rope we neglect that one and we what we do we simply replace it with a force so if you are having a rope uh, or a structure that that is connected with the system through a rope if you want to remove that supporting structure so you have to show it in the form of tension okay then smooth surfaces for example we are having to other one will be due to surface roughness that is the friction in case of smooth surface you, you will assume there is no friction but if there is rough surface there will be another component due to friction which we have shown over here okay again we are having rolling element like you can see here in all these cases the object can roll so we will be having a normal component sir beech mein aapki awaaz ghayab ho gayi thi sir two or three dobara batayein aapki awaaz nahi aayi acha abhi aa rahi hai awaaz Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So two or three. Me, see. Uh, for example, if you are having a rolling contact, a object roll is rolling. So in this case, uh, we assume that when the object roll, it is making a point contact. a point contact with the other surface so in order to if you are having some rolling element if you want to uh, show its reaction so uh, for example if i remove this this area the supporting structure so instead of this what i will do i will show reaction as a normal one so here will be the reaction of in that uh, of that case and then we we have uh, that rough surface for example if you are having okay if you are having a rough surface not a smooth surface so in in case of smooth surface there will be no friction but in case of rough sur surface definitely there will be a friction so uh, along with this normal component there will be one component that is basically showing the resistance to the flow or resistance to the motion which is known as uh, friction okay so similarly again we are having a roller contact roller contact means with the help of this contact the upper body or the upper object it can roll or it can move so the motion will be due to this rolling okay so in this case if you want to replace it 
so the replacement will be again normal to the surface okay since the object can move in this direction in this direction here we are having no uh, reaction but it cannot move downward because there is a reactive force so that reactive force should be shown over here similarly in this structure if you want to replace this structure this structure if you want to replace this structure so you can see this can move horizontally but it can not move vertically so if you want to replace this structure and if you want to show forces on this object it will be again normal to it is it clear means this force there is no force which basically uh, restrain this motion but the, there is force which basically uh, restrain the vertical motion so that's why we have put uh, this sort of reactive force over here okay now in case of pin connection so in case of pin connection you can see the object can rotate like this about this pin okay but it cannot move horizontally neither it can move vertically so if you want to replace this pin what you will do that due to that uh, horizontal reaction force and vertical reaction force you have to show those reaction forces but there is no no re restriction to the moment to the rotation so that's why we haven't showed any rotation okay for example if this pin and this object is also welded and the object can if the object cannot even rotate so in that case you have to show a rotating uh, a resisting moment for example over here you can see this object can neither move here neither it can move in this way neither it can rotate because over here we are having a fixed support so if you want to remove this support what you have to show you have to show force in x force in y and also the resisting moment if you are having a, an object with a sub, some mass if you want to replace this mass if you want to show some force instead of this mass so as you know that uh, object with mass m is attracted towards the earth surface with the force equal to its weight and weight is basically equal to mg so if you want to replace this one you will show it by mg is it clear okay now uh, in case if you look at this figure we have some force acting on this body and we, we are having this mechanism so the force that we apply over here the same force through this spring will be transmitted to this ob object or this body so if you want to replace this one you will place same force over here and it should be basically uh, attention because the direction of force is in this direction so direction will not be changed okay if it is a compressive force in the opposite direction and if you have a compressive spring so you will change the direction of spring but in this case we can see that actually it's a tension force or pulling force so we have shown it as a pulling force okay now step for making free body diagram the step one you have to decide which system to isolate you have to isolate one of the system so then you have to decide which which of the system is uh, the the basic body or which which of the system need to be isolated or which which is the system on which i need to perform the analysis then the second step will be uh you 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 need to define the boundaries of that isolated system if you want to isolate a system that you need to define the boundary that this will be the bond uh, the, this will be the uh, the boundary this will be the limit of my body on which i want to make analysis this component this component this component will be included in my body and remaining all components will be removed and instead of all those component i will show the uh, reaction force or the effective force okay then in step 3 what we will do we will identify that if i remove the supporting structure what sort of force i need to put it so identify all forces which act on the isolated system as applied by remove contacting and attracting bodies and represent them in their proper position on the diagram of isolated system okay once you do all those things then you need to use some coordinate system so the coordinate system it can be x y it can be x y z system it can be uh, for example it can be nt system it can be r theta it can be r theta z system so it's up to you which coordinate you need to use so you have to decide and you have to show it along with the diagram so these are the four step the first one is isolate the second one is basically identify or uh, specify the boundaries then show the forces and finally show the coordinate system
ओके सो लेट्स कम बैक टू अवर क्लास ओके सो यहां पे देख लें ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड वी आर हैविंग एक्चुअल सिस्टम एंड ऑन द राइट साइड वी आर बेसिकली हैविंग फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम्स सो इन फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम व्हाट वी डू बेसिकली वी रिमूव द सपोर्टिंग स्ट्रक्चर एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ दोस स्ट्रक्चर वी पुट फोर्सेस सो फॉर एग्जांपल हियर वी आर हैविंग अस ट्रस एलिमेंट दिस इज आवर मेन बॉडी एंड फॉर फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम वी विल रिमूव द सपोर्टिंग स्ट्रक्चर so the support means if i remove the support you 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 look at this one which joint do we have over here we are having a pin joint means this object can rotate like this if for this joint but it cannot move horizontally or it cannot move vertically so if i remove this one i need to put forces in x as well as in y direction over here if you look at this joint so we are having rolling contact means if this system is having only this one joint so this system it basically uh, what we can say it it can it can uh, have re restriction only in one direction and that that is basically vertical means it can move vertically it can rotate but the only restriction to it it is basically in the vertical direction so that's why i will show only force a reactive force in the vertical direction and the actual force will remain as it is similarly will be like for this one okay let's see this so जी जी सर जी सर एक ही डायरेक्शन डाउनवर्ड क्यों है और बी की डायरेक्शन अपवर्ड क्यों है एक ही डायरेक्शन डाउनवर्ड क्यों है और बी की डायरेक्शन अपवर्ड क्यों है सो यू विल आइडेंटिफाई बेस्ड ऑन दिस फोर्स पी यस सर ठीक है एक एक का मैं बता देता हूं बाकी पे खुद सोचें इसमें मैं ज्यादा फोकस इस वजह से नहीं कर रहा क्योंकि आप ऑलरेडी इस दूसरे सब्जेक्ट में इसको पढ़ भी चुके हैं फॉर एग्जांपल पी को आप देखें पी को अगर आप खींचेंगे ना ठीक है तो ये जो ऑब्जेक्ट आपके पास है ये यहां से उठेगा ऐसे उठेगा ना और yes, की तरफ ये यहां पे देखिए कंप्रेस होगा नीचे झुकेगा ये वाला इज इट क्लियर सही है सर समझ आ गई यस सर ओके सो नाउ फॉर एग्जांपल ओवर हियर इफ यू लुक एट दिस वन वी हैव पी वी हैव दिस मोमेंट एंड अगर आप देखते हैं इफ यू वांट टू रिमूव द सपोर्टिंग स्ट्रक्चर सो वी कैन रिमूव स्ट्रक्चर एट दिस पॉइंट एंड दिस पॉइंट ओके If I remove the supporting structure at this point, so what sort of joint do we have over here? It's basically it not um, allowing direction movement in x direction, neither in y direction, but it allow movement. If we have only this one joint, so the system can rotate about this point. So uh, the re uh, reaction will be basically in x and y both direction. And over here, if you look at this one, so this is just basically. Uh, a contact point a single contact point so means the reactive force at this position it will be normal to the surface this one so if i remove this object the reactive force will be two forces over here one in x one in y and instead of this one will be having a normal force so uh, on left side we are having actual system and on right side we are having free body diagram so to make uh, yourself equip with the free body diagram or to get your concepts clear so for practice uh, you, you, actually in your book you are having uh, three exercises exercise 3a 3b and 3c so kindly go through it it's in your book chapter 3 okay diys means do it yourself so uh, our current dean dr fan mufti he used to teach us few subjects and actually uh, he used to use this word do it yourself so uh, he was there in america for his post or can before this for phd so he actually told us that there is some sort of workshops of sort of shop and in that shop you can manufacture you can assemble different products for yourself different machines for yourself so you have to go there you have to collect different component and then you have to assemble it by yourself so the name of that shop was do it yourself so he used to write for means a task that that we we needed to practice or uh, we needed to uh, do it at home so he used to write this word do it yourself so i have written same word for you that do it yourself that is exercise 3a 3b and 3c okay what what we have in that exercise on right side you will be having diagram like this uh, on the left side and on the right side you will be having free body diagram but on right side they, you will be having a force you will be having another force and this force will be removed either this force will be removed or instead of this force there will be only force in y direction there will be no force in the x direction so uh, on the right side you will be having incorrect free body diagram 
what you need to do you need to correct those free body diagrams by placing the required additional forces okay so uh, the, there are three table and you need to do, uh, to go through all these three tables okay so uh, equilibrium condition we already know that the summation of forces if you if you are considering 2d so summation of forces in x and y direction should be zero and for 3d should, the summation of forces in x as well as in y and z direction should be equal to zero and summation of moment about any point should be equal to zero okay so for solving problem initially we will apply summation of forces in x so maybe our problem uh, our, in some cases our problem can be solved with this single step summation of force in x direction should be equal to zero and in some cases if you apply the second step submission of forces in y direction so maybe our problem gets solved with these two steps but in some cases uh, the problem still remain unsolved so then you have to use summation of forces uh, uh, in z or the uh, summation of our moment uh, about any point should be equal to zero then we have to use that third condition okay so for example over here in this diagram if you want to solve it so in this figure all these uh, forces are collinear means they are in same line they don't have any perpendicular distance between them so the moment due to these forces about any point means there is no, no logic like in this one so we cannot use that summation of moment about any point should be equal to zero there is no force in y direction there is only force in x direction so for this the equilibrium condition will be summation of forces in x direction should be equal to zero in this cases all forces are basically passing through same point so no moment however the forces are having two components x and y so summation of forces in x summation of forces in y direction should be equal to zero and then over here if you look at this one uh, we, we are having different forces and uh, these two these all these forces are having some perpendicular distance between them so these forces will be having definitely some moments and for example if you want to find out that moment so okay so due to this perpendicular distance there will be moment and since here we are uh, not having any force in y direction so submission of forces and x direction should be equal to zero in y direction there will be no moment and summation of moment about any specific point or about any axis should also be equal to zero in this cases and i mean in case four we are having three forces it will be having both components as well as we are having moment so here in this case we have to apply all the components summation of forces in x direction summation of forces in y direction and then summation of forces in uh, sorry summation of moment about any x it should be equal to zero since uh, i have used this x y so this means i am considering 2d system okay now let's go through some problems some sample problem okay hopefully you get all the basic concept so now uh, we can have some numericals okay so uh determine the magnitude of force forces c and t which along with other three forces uh shown act on the bridge truss joint so we are having one joint of truss and all these forces are acting on this one so since it's a truss joint it's a bridge so we know that the bridge uh, will remain in position of rest it will remain in a state of rest it it doesn't move from its place so uh, in other words we what we can say we can say that this joint will also remain in state of rest means the summation of all forces and the summation of all moments about uh, this joint it should be equal to zero so since all these forces this force this force this force this force this force are passing through same point uh, so there is no need for uh, using that moment step however we we, we need to look at the forces 
we are having forces in x direction we are having forces in y direction we are having forces in both direction so what they are basically asking they are basically asking to find out the magnitude of this force c and the magnitude of this force t and if the system is in equilibrium so we can apply equilibrium condition so the first step will be you need to make a free body diagram for this one okay and what you will do you will just simply use all these forces nothing else so uh, we can also consider the same structure as a free body diagram because uh, almost all forces are directly given here okay so the first step will be summation of all forces in x direction should be equal to zero so summation of all forces we have this force in x direction this force in x direction and uh, this force component should be t cos of 40 and the uh, x component of this force it should be c sine of uh, yes c sine of 20 so summation of forces in x direction should be equal to zero so you can see 8 minus 16 and then t cos 40 and c sine 20 right these forces and from here we will get this equation and then summation of forces in y direction should be equal to zero when we do it we get this equation so this one and this one from here find out the value of c put c value in here we will get the answer of t and once you get t take this t and put it in this equation or in this equation you will get this c value is it clear yes sir okay. yes sir now uh what, what they are saying if instead of x y coordinate if you use x dash y dash coordinates so then in that case what we can do so in that case the, this force will be in x direction and for this force you need to find out the component along this one so uh you need to think over it so you you need to come find out the component of force along x dash and y dash and you need to add components along y dash then you need to add components along x dash and it should be equal to zero when you do it when you put it equal to zero so from here again you can find out this c component and you can find out this t component from here okay so aap isko khud kar le theek hai ye ye dekhne bada aasan hai in this case fayda kya hoga if you add all components in y direction so in y direction you will not be having any uh, t component so in y dash you will be having only other forces along with uh, c component so you can directly find out c in uh, the first step okay now uh, is problem ko thoda sa samajhne ki zarurat hai it's very much easy but little bit conceptual calculate tension t in cable which support the 500 kg mass with the pulley arrangement shown each pulley is free to rotate about its bearing and the weight of all parts are small compared with the load find the magnitude of total force on the bearing of pulley c what you need to do you need to find out the value of this force t okay let me check again find the magnitude of total force on the bearing of pulley c yes this force we need to find out value of t okay so the first step we need to make a free body diagram so let's start with pulley a so with pulley a here this this wire and here we are having this wire and here again wire the wire is having 500 kg mass so the force will be weight that is downward and then for this wire and for this wire if we want to remove it so we will show it uh, tension t1 and t2 this is free body diagram of one then for two if i want to remove the all the supporting structure so this wire is basically pulling it upward it is pulling it upward and this wire is pulling this one downward so i will make it accordingly and then for pulley c uh, this one is pulling it downward so tension again this one is pulling it upward tension and over here we are having pin point so this pin is not allowing it to move x or in y direction but it is allowing this pulley to rotate about this point. So there will be no re resistance to moment, but resistance in the x direction and resistance in the y direction. So I have shown it over here. Hopefully you got that how I made all these free body diagrams. Now let's, let's start with the pulley A. 
so in pulley a what we can do uh, the first step will be summation of all forces should be equal to zero so summation of forces in x direction we don't have any force in x direction so let's say summation of force in y direction over here i have shown this coordinate axis which i want to use so summation of forces in y direction should be equal to zero so that should be t1 plus t2 minus 500 multiplied by 9.81 should be equal to zero okay so th that will be summation of forces in y direction so this is the equation now what i need to do the other condition is summation of moment about point o should be equal to zero so when i do it so t1 multiply by this distance which is r t2 multiply by r this is clockwise this is anti clockwise one will be positive one will be negative so t1 r minus t2 r should be equal to zero t1 r minus t2 r should be equal to zero if I take one other side, R, R will be cancelled and T1 should be equal to T2. So, if I put over here T1 equal to T2 instead of this, if I put T1, so this will become 2T1 and 2T1 will be equal to this value and I will get the answer of T1. Once I get the answer of T1, that will be equal to T2. Clear till this point? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now move to move towards the next pulley this this t2 this is equal to this force right so this t2 now we have the value of this t2 so again summation of forces that is t2 t3 and t4 it should be equal to zero right so we, we will use one that equation and then again look at this one this t3 summation of moment about this point if you put it equal to 0 so t3 into r and t4 into r should be equal to 0 and by using that similar way we will come up with the answer that t3 is equal to t4 like this one right t3 is equal to t4 and when when you when you add all of them so you you will come up with the answer that t3 is equal to t4 and if it is equal to and both of them should be equal to t2 when you put summation of all forces in y direction means t3 plus t4 minus t2 is equal to 0 so t3 plus t4 is equal to t2 so another another word what we can say this t3 and t4 this basically equal to half of 2450 so this is the answer okay so now we get t4 now we get t3 so this t3 value we already have that uh, t3 value and it should also be equal to this t3 right okay Imagine if we are having this pulley, you are applying some force over here and force over here. Imagine this downward force is more than this force. So what will happen? The pulley will remain in state of rest or it will rotate? It will rotate, sir. In which direction? Downward direction. As okay. Downward force. Okay. okay, if this force becomes greater, then in clockwise direction okay it will rotate in clock okay if i want to make this pulley in state of rest or in equilibrium condition what 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 will be the condition for it sir d is equal to t3 yes these two forces should be equal okay so that's why i have put it over here t should be equal to t3 right so we already have t3 value that is 1226 newton okay so now consider this pulley. We have T3 and that, that should be equal to T. So summation of forces in X direction should be equal to 0. So in X direction we are having Fx and we are having T cos of 30. We already have T value so from here we can get Fx. Then summation of forces in Y direction should be equal to 0. So T sine of 30, T3 and Fy. That should be equal to 0. So from here what we will get we will get basically Fy and we have Fx Fy so we can get the uh, one resultant force of uh, or what the re uh, one uh, resultant reaction force how uh, we can get it Fx square plus Fy square square root so from here you can get the net resultant force that is applied at this point or the reaction force or net reaction force so by this way we can solve this problem okay uh, regarding problem 3-3 uh, three, uh, three and 3-4, three sample problem 
three and four of chapter three. You need to do it yourself. Now let's move towards the actual problems. Okay, so determine the force P required to maintain a 200 kg engine in the position for which theta is equal to 30 degree. The diameter of pulley at B is negligible. <coughs> so what they are saying, we are having a 200 weight, and you are trying to lift it with the help of this P. So since it's an equilibrium condition, this means this object is in state of rest. Means you are applying some force. As a result of that force, everything is in static condition. They are not moving. All forces are cancelling the effect of each other. Okay, let me check the attendance for a while. Okay, so uh, if I remove this force, so uh, uh, this 200 kg mass, so I will put a weight downward. And over here, since it's in equilibrium, so how it can be in equilibrium means this point A is applying some force on this point C with the help of this rope. So if I remove this rope, it will be a tension over here. And what they are saying that there is uh, the neglect the size of pulley. So size of pulley means that this force is applied at point B and this force is also applied at point B. Means this force as well as this force both are applied at the same point. That's why they are saying neglect the size of pulley. Okay. So this P should be equal to this tension. And another word we can say that the P is applied over here. So if I make a free body diagram, it will be like this. Okay. And what they are saying that theta is equal to 30 degree. This is 30 degree. Theta is equal to 30 degree. This side of triangle is 2. This side of triangle is 2. So according to means uh, the, the, the rules and regulation of triangle, if these two sides are same, means if this is having 2 meter, if this is also 2 meter, or the length of this side and this side is same. So this means this angle and this angle should also be same. The angle that the, both of them make with the common line, that should also be same. The angle over here and the angle over here will be same. So if it is 30 degree, how much is the total angle in a right angle? Uh, how much is the total angle in triangle? 180 degree. Okay. If you remove 30 from 180, how much is left? 150 degree. Okay. So what should be the angle over here? 150 divided by 2 third length is 75. Oh, oh, okay. 75 and 75. Very good. Okay. So we are having this 30, this 75, this 75. Okay, now this is very good. So uh, you see over here, this angle is 30 degree, right? And we are having this line. This line is making an angle of 30 with horizontal. If I draw perpendicular to this line and this line, so the angle between these two perpendicular should also be equal to how much? 30 degree. 30 degree. Okay. So the perpendicular to this one, let it be like this one. Okay. I can give it a name of normal or T or whatever axis you, you want to give it. So if I draw a perpendicular over here to this one, perpendicular over here, and this is X axis, perpendicular to this one should be vertical. So the angle between this perpendicular and vertical, it should be equal to 30 degree. So for example, if I draw perpendicular over here, so the angle between this perpendicular and vertical, it should be equal to 30 degree between the angle between this and the horizontal was 30. So I draw perpendicular to this one that is and perpendicular to this one. So the angle should also be same. Okay. Now, how much is the angle between 
this one and perpendicular to this one how much is that angle 90 degrees 90 so if we remove this 75 from it how much would be this angle 15 15 so now uh, what what i want to do actually uh, i i have decided that i will use this axis give it any name give it name n t a b whatever you want to give it so let's say this is x and imagine this is y okay so let's start with uh, forces in x direction so summation of forces in x direction so this p the component of p along x it should be equal to p cos of 15 and this is p cos of 15 okay this component is along y axis so i will not consider this one and then this we have another force it should also have one component along this x axis and one along y axis so you see it's one component is along x axis and one is along y axis so the component along x axis that should be having 9 200 into 9.81 cos of 30 degree and direction is opposite to x so it should be minus So minus two hundred nine point eight one into cos of thirty degree and summation of all forces in x direction should be equal to zero. So when I solve it in the very first step, I get this answer. Okay, so let's move towards next problem. Now uh, th these are again very much simple problem. What you need to do basically, you are having a car. Its weight is acting at this point. and uh, what what they are asking determine the normal forces under each tire when the car is in equilibrium state any assumption so the assumption that we will make we will uh, assume that the surface is smooth means there is no friction offered to these tires so once you made that uh, assumption you don't need to do any calculation for friction okay so uh, since it's a rolling contact so reaction will be here and reaction will also be here and the weight will be acting downward so you see this is the free body diagram weight downward reaction here reaction here okay we want to find out that reaction so how we can do summation of all forces in x direction no force in x direction summation of all forces in y direction this plus this it should be equal to this one like this one okay and why we put this two to because we are having two wheels on each side then the summation of moment the summation of moment maybe you can consider this point you can consider this point or you can consider this point but uh, we should consider either this point or this point the moment about f or a moment about r because if we take this moment about f so the moment due to this force will be eliminated and we will directly get the value of an r so sub, let's say the moment about this point should be equal to 0 when we do it we get the value of an r when we get this and r put it over here we get the value of nf so this is the solution now over here we are having carpenter he he is having some uh, piece of wood on his shoulder uh, you, you can say uh, a board on his shoulder since the board is on his shoulder it is applying a force downward and to make it in equilibrium condition the shoulder is also applying a force in upward direction as a reactive force okay since this point is not the center of this uh, wood or center of this board so it will try to move in this direction so what the person is doing the person is applying a force with the help of his hand in downward direction on it at point b the weight of this whole it will be acting in the center means if it is how much 1.5 0.6 0.3 so 2.4 so it, sh it should act at 1.2 meter yes sir okay so now what they are asking a carpenter carry 6 kg uniform board as shown what downward force that he feel on his shoulder mean they are basically asking about this force which we feel on his shoulder so it will be same force which the the shoulder is applying on the board so the, the weight will be here this is the weight this is the reactive force and this is the force due to the hand this is the free body diagram over here we are having si units but in this we are having foot pound system so what 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 i can do i can put summation of all forces in y direction should be equal to zero and the summation of moment about any point so if i put summation of moment in this case so in this equation i will be having this unknown and this unknown if i put summation of force on this point 
submission of moment on this point should be equal to zero. So this force is known, and this is unknown. I will get this this N P. If I say summation of moment about this point should be equal to zero, so this force is given. So the moment will also be given, and the the moment due to this force will be equal to normal force multiplied by this distance. So N A is unknown. That will be find out by this equation. Since I want to find out this uh, N A, so I will directly uh, consider moment about point B. Let the moment about point B is equal to zero. So in this single step, I will get this answer. If I put moment about this point, then I need to do another step, which is summation of all forces in y direction should also be equal to zero. So this is a very much simple problem. Just take net moment about this point equal to zero, and you will get this answer. Okay. Now over here, uh, for example, we are having three cables. Okay, so uh, the, the, these problems are almost like same: three, four, three, five, three, six, three, ten, thirteen. You you need to do it by yourself. And three fifteen, I am doing it over here. Apart from this, three eighteen, three twenty four, and three thirty five, you need to do it by yourself. I will do this three thirty five problem. Three cables, that is A, C, B, C, and D. They they are basically holding this weight. So if I remove this weight, it will uh, instead of this I need to put a force, 30 into 9.81, and that force will be here, in form of tension. Over here we'll be having another force which is tension in cable AC, and this is tension in cable BC. So if this is 45, if I make a line over here, so this will become right angle triangle. If this is 45, if this is 90, what should be this angle? Forty-five. Forty-five. Okay. Since over here we are having line, this is thirty. This is ninety. What should be this angle? Sixty. Sixty. So that's why I put all these in a free body diagram. What they are asking: three cable are joined at junction ring C. Determine the tension in cable AC and BC caused by the weight of thirty kg cylinder. So this and this tension we need to find out. So summation means all point uh, all forces are passing to same point. So summation of forces in the next direction should be equal to zero. This. Summation of forces in y direction should be equal to zero. So from here, you see, find out this T A C. Put this T A C value over here, and you will get T B C from this equation. When once you get T B C, put it in any equation, you will get T A C value. So this is very much simple problem. That's why I have left the remaining problem. Okay. Uh, in this I haven't mentioned twenty five. Okay. Okay, twenty five. In twenty-five, what they are saying, we are having this setup. If you put this setup, uh, the hammer over here, so with the with help of this setup, you can take, you can pull this uh, nail out from here with the help of this hammer. So a block placed under the head of claw hammer, as shown this this block, greatly facilitate the extraction of nail. If two hundred newton pull on the handle is required, this means. If you need to pull this hammer with 200 newton force to pull this nail out, to pull the nail, calculate the tension T in the nail and magnitude and the magnitude A of forces exerted by hammer head on the block. Mean the reactive forces that we have over here. And uh, if you if you pull this hammer upward, since it is in, within the material, the material will try to pull it downward. Right. So, if you overcome this tension, the tension or the, the 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 pulling force with which the this material or this block is pulling this uh, the, 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 uh, this nail downward, if you overcome this force, in that case, it will move upward. In that case, you can pull this nail out from here. So, when I make a free body diagram, instead of this nail I, over here, I have shown a tensile force, and at this point. If you look at this point, uh, since we will be having a normal force at this point, so if I put a normal force, it should have two components, a x and a y. And over here we are having this 200 newton force. Here we have 50 lb. This means again the units are changed. Okay. So what I need to do, I need to find out this T and the reactive force over here. So the first step can be. Uh, We can have summation of forces in x direction, summation of forces in y direction, and summation of moment about any point should be equal to zero. So we we uh, over here uh, one only one point is marked that is point A. 
so if i want to find out the moment about point a due to all these forces so we are having forces at this point so if i use this point a for moment the moment due to these two forces should be equal to zero okay so for example if i want to find out moment about point a that should be equal to zero so it will be t multiply by this distance over here it's 50 but since it is a uh, four point system you, you need to use these values okay so you will use actual problem value this is just for concept so t multiply by this perpendicular distance about this point so you will get moment about this point and over here we are having this force and the perpendicular distance till this point you see this perpendicular distance given 200 mm over here it's 8 inches so this force multiply by this perpendicular distance from here you will get the moment and there is no remaining force so by using this thing there is only one unknown which is t so you can get the value of t from this equation once you get then what you can do summation of forces in x direction so this force will having x component and x component for x component you need this angle with horizontal okay how you can get this angle for example if i draw a line perpendicular to this one which is this one and if i draw a line perpendicular to horizontal which is perpendicular the angle between these two is 20 so this means 200 should also have 20 degree angle with horizontal right yes sir okay so 200 cos of 20 degree will be the x component but since here the force is 50 so that's why 50 cos of 20 and x direction another force in x direction that is ax it is an opposite x so minus x so you will get this equation and then Summation of force in y direction. So this force, this force, and y component of this force should be over here. So from here you can get ax. From here you can get ay. Combine these two, and you will get the reactive force at this location. So this was your whole problem. Now, uh, what what we need to understand? The person is basically in squat position. You know, means uh, the, the exercise like uh, which we call as squatting. So in in that exercise, you need to be in this position initially. You move to this position and then you try to lift back. So the person is initially in this condition, and what he is trying to do, he is trying to move upward. He is trying to lift his body. So to lift his body over here on this joint, there will be some force applied. Similarly, the person is applying force on earth surface or on floor surface. So the floor will also put some reactive forces on his body or on his uh, foot. Okay. Now inside, uh, they have given detail of the inside of foot. For example, this section is basically known as femur. This one is known as fibula. This one is tibia this one uh, sorry this soft soft one is patellar tendon or patellar tendon this one is only known as patella so what they are saying with his weight w equally distributed on both feet means both feet are facing weight w so means one feet will be having how much weight it should be how much half of half of so w by 2 so if the downward force of body is w by 2 this means the reactive force should also be equal to w by 2 so for a single uh, uh, feet analysis what i i did i put this force w by 2 now a man began to slowly rise from squatting position as indicated in the figure determine the tensile force f in the Patellar tendon and the magnitude of force reaction at point O. Okay, you see which one patellar tendon is this portion? This soft one, this red one. So when when the person trying to lift, so they see that there will be a tensile force in this one. There, there will be a pull, the pull in this one. Okay, at this section, you need to find out the tensile force. So in, on this section. I just put that pull, the tensile force F over here. And what they are asking tensile force and the magnitude of force reaction at point O and reaction force at point O. 
so if if basically how 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 you can lift this body this body it will try to pull this point upward in that case it can be straightened so if i remove if i remove this object the stop body from here i need to show this force which is in this direction so i have shown that force over here and it should be having two component one is x one is y so it's at point o so it should be o x and o y note that the line of action of patellar tendon force is along the midline neglect the weight of lower leg so what you need to do the self weight of leg should be neglected so in other words what we need to do we need to find out this tensile force f and we need to find out the reactive force at this point so how how we can do it for, uh, the first step should be like uh, let's uh, let's find out the moment about this point o if i put moment about point o so moment due to these forces should be equal to zero and this force this force is having a perpendicular dis distance till point o so f multiplied by 50 will be the moment and due to this force moment about point o will be the perpendicular distance already given 2 uh, w by 2 multiplied by 225 so summation of moment about this point o from here we will get the value of f so f will be equal to 2.25 times of body weight so on this soft portion how much force you will feel when you lift yourself from squat position that should be 2.25 times of your weight so if your weight is uh, 60 kg so this should be more than 120 kg right the force that you will have on this soft portion now let's find out the reaction on this joint so summation of forces in x direction x force here we don't have any x is x component since the angle is 55 so f cos of 55 when you put it in equation put it equal to 0 so you will get x is equal to or x is equal to 1.29 similarly for y you will get it 2.34 w so when you put it in this equation or x square plus or y square square the root okay so uh, when you find out the magnitude what you get you get 2.67 w this means how much force you will face at this location how much force you will uh, face at this location at this point o or uh, how much force this contact point will bear when you lift yourself from squat position it is about 2.7 times so 2.7 times means if your weight is 60 so that will be 60 60 120 and that will be about 150 or 160 kg so weight equivalent to 160 kg will be faced by this section so that's why in exercise it's very much important that you 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 must have proper posture you must have proper technique if you lift yourself from uh, a wrong position or in wrong posture since the forces are too much so it can like uh, damage your joints it can damage your different body parts and th that that's the reason like sometimes in exercise or sometimes when you uh, have running on uh, with wrong shoes or when you running in improper way you can damage your knees because the reactive forces from the uh, earth surface as well as the, the the force that your body apply all that has to be bearn by your knees joint and so that in that way you can damage or you can weaken your knee joint so that's why a proper posture and a proper method for running as well as for exercising should be adopted okay so uh, in this problem the statement was little bit difficult but actually uh, when when we made the free body diagram then the remaining problem was easy so this was 335 and this was the end of today's class so if you are having any question you can ask आपने उसको लेके आना है स्टेटिक पोजिशन में 
ठीक है तो उस स्टेटिक पोजिशन पे लाने के लिए आप कितने फोर्सेस उस पर लगाने पड़ रहे एक आप इसको ऐसे तरीके से देख सकते हैं या दूसरा ये इमेजिन करें आपके पास एक गाड़ी है या आपके पास एक एलिमेंट है जिसपे आप एक डायरेक्शन से चार फोर्सेस अप्लाई कर रहे हो ठीक है फ्रॉम राइट साइड आप उस पर चार फोर्सेस अप्लाई कर रहे हो yes, फिर लेकिन वो ऑब्जेक्ट आपके पास उसके बावजूद भी रेस्ट पोजिशन में है उसके बावजूद भी वो ऑब्जेक्ट आपके पास रेस्ट पोजिशन में वो रेस्ट पोजिशन में कैसे हो सकती है दिस मीन देयर मस्ट बी सम अपोजिंग फोर्स ठीक है वो अपोजिंग फोर्स उसको कहां से मिल रही है वो सारी की सारी हॉरिजेंटल डायरेक्शन से मिल रही है या उसको कुछ वर्टिकल से मिल रही है या सारी की सारी जो रेजिस्टिव फोर्स है वो उसको वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन से मिल रही है समझ आ रही है तो अगर हमारे पास स्मूथ सर्फेस है हम कहते हैं कि जो ऑब्जेक्ट रेस्ट कंडीशन में है इन दैट केस ये जो रेजिस्टेंस को मिल रही है ये इस पॉइंट पे जहां पे स्मूथ सरफेस में फ्रिक्शन का कोई एलिमेंट इसको इसके मोशन को रोकने की कोशिश नहीं कर रही बल्कि ये जो रिमेनिंग फोर्सेस है उसने इसके मोशन को रोका है या इसके जो रिमेनिंग फोर्सेस है उसको टैकल किया है इज इट क्लियर यस सर तो बेसिकली इसका मकसद ये है इट डजेंट मीन कि ऑब्जेक्ट आपके पास मूव कर रहे हैं अच्छा अगर आपके पास रफ सर्फेस हो ठीक है तो उसके जो इनिशियल uh, फोर्सेज आप, आपने अप्लाई किया उस फोर्सेज को कैंसिल करने में कुछ हाथ किस चीज का होगा फ्रिक्शन का भी होगा लेकिन अगर स्मूथ सरफेस है तो आपके पास वो जो इनिशियल फोर्सेस को कैंसिल आउट करने का जो इफेक्ट है ठीक है वो उसमें फ्रिक्शन का कोई हाथ नहीं होगा बिकॉज देर विल बी नो कंपोनेंट ड्यू टू फ्रिक्शन राइट ओके एनी वन एल्स ओके क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो स्क्रीन में पे स्टॉप कर देता हूँ शेयरिंग और रिकॉर्डिंग भी मैं ऑफ कर देता हूँ सर जी जी सर मिड कोर्स इंक्लूड होगा सर मिड कोर्स आई डोंट नो इट्स टू अर्ली लेकिन लेट्स सी कि क्या डिसाइड होता है अगर ऊपर uh, से कुछ डिसाइड हुआ तो फिर शायद इंक्लूड करना पड़े अगर uh, uh, उनकी तरफ से कोई स्ट्रक्चर इस किस्म की ना आई सो देन शायद इंक्लूड ना करें सर प्रेप्रिक्स भी नहीं है सर तो थोड़ा मुश्किल हो जाएगा प्रेप्रिक्स भी नहीं है तो 